Reversing diabetes is possible. We've done so many videos and discussed this that now our focus on treating diabetes should be reversing it or putting it into remission rather than managing it. And But now we have evidence to suggest that not only can this help your health overall and get you off medications, potentially reduce your cardiovascular risk, it can reduce your incidence of cancers. At least that's what a new study shows, but only if you can put your disease into remission or lose substantial amount of weight, like over 20 kilograms, not with standard of care diabetes treatment where you lose maybe five or 10 kilograms and treat with medications, that does not appear to reduce the incidence of cancers in these studies. So let's get into some of these details because this makes a difference. It's one thing to say reversing diabetes, putting diabetes into remission is important, is something we can do. It's another thing to say it's what we have to do to improve your outcomes and your risk of getting cancer. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And these are big statements. If we were to say that this is what you have to do to reduce your risk of cancer with type 2 diabetes, that takes a very different connotation than saying it's important to do or one of the things you can do. And I can't say we have strong data to say you have to do it is the one thing to do. But now we have two studies that just came out that suggest that might be the case and certainly paves the way for future research in this area. So let's talk about these studies, both published in uh, the journal Diabetes Care. So the first is Associations of Bariatric Surgery with Cancer Incidence in Patients with Obesity and Diabetes long-term results from the Swedish obese subjects study. Now, first thing you notice from this title, it's in it's a bariatric surgery study. But up until, you know, ketogenic diets becoming studied more, really bariatric surgery was the one way to um, effectively put type 2 diabetes into remission or, or reverse it. And what this study did was they looked at um, 701 patients who were obese and had type 2 diabetes. It wasn't randomized because it's really hard to randomize to bariatric surgery, or not at least back then when this study was being undergone. 393 chose surgery, 308 chose uh, usual care, and there was actually a 21-year follow-up, which is pretty good. Now, the cancer incidence was not a pre-specified outcome. So this is something that's important about study design, trial design, um, and what it means. So sort of, it's sort of like exploratory data analysis. It wasn't that it was powered and designed for this. So right away, that sort of weakens the quality of the study. We have to be honest about that. Still can be an interesting finding, but saying pr it proves something kind of is off the table because of the way the study was designed. And so what they found, if you had, cut to the chase here, if you had diabetes remission at 10 years post-study start, your cancer incidence decreased with a hazard ratio of 0.4. Now that's pretty significant hazard ratio. When we talk about hazard ratios, usually we talk about the other side, the risk of something. And we frequently say it has to be above two or you know, twice as often um, to really sort of catch your attention when it's a retrospective going back and looking at data analysis like this. Well, from the other side, from a preventive side, from a, uh, a helping side, if it's below 0.5, then that shows that it's pretty significant. Here we have 0.4. So achieving diabetes remission at 10 years decreases your cancer incidence with a hazard ratio of 0.4. That's pretty powerful. And this is important because as they stated in the introduction to this paper, the combination of diabetes and obesity is estimated to be involved in up to 40% of cancers, 40%. And that includes liver, esophageal, endometrial cancers. I mean, that's pretty high. The other interesting part from this study in terms of the findings, the 10-year remission was very different from the two-year remission. I think that's important. So two-year remission with bariatric surgery was 70%, pretty high but the 10 year remission was 34%. So that's still pretty good. I mean, 34% remission at, at 10 years is good, but to go from 70% to 34% really tells you that surgery is not the cure all, right? Because what, what takes place after surgery, what lifestyle are you now leading? And unfortunately we know so many people go back to poor lifestyle habits. But what this study suggests was that two year remission rate changes dramatically. Um, but even at 10 years, the 34% remission from surgery versus 6% from the controls or usual care, still a pretty big difference. And if you just look at the, the hazard ratio of cancer 
uh, reduction in cancer incidence for those who had surgery versus control, it was 0.6. So still pretty good. A lot of that likely had to do with diabetes remission and the higher level of weight loss that occurred. And this is also important because other studies, most notably this one study called the Look Ahead Study, um, which was a lifestyle intervention of you know reduce your calories, low fat diet, increase your exercise kind of study, did show a seven kilogram weight loss at 12 years, but there was no difference um, in intervention or control in cancer, cardiovascular disease, and, and the outcomes we really, that people really care about. Um, and a big part of that maybe has to do with the fact that remission was so low, putting reversing or putting diabetes into remission was so low, or the weight loss wasn't enough, or the diabetes control wasn't good enough. Who knows? But that certainly paints the picture very differently. Now, in a way that sort of is in contrast to another study published in, in the journal Diabetes Care titled Effect of Metformin and Lifestyle Interventions on Mortality in the Diabetes Prevention Program and Diabetes Prevention Program Outcomes Study. So again, this is a, a retrospective look at, at a study done back in the 1990s where there were 3,234 adults who are at high risk for diabetes, and they were randomized to lifestyle, metformin, or a placebo, basically, and to see what kind of outcomes they had. Now, again, lifestyle was you know, increase your exercise 150 minutes per week of aerobic exercise and reduce your calories, lower your fat kind of diet. So, you know, traditional, maybe outdated, I, we could say, um, lifestyle advice for, for diabetes. Um, there's 21 year follow-up. Now here's the first thing I found interesting was cancer was the leading cause of death in this group. I thought for sure it would be cardiovascular disease. It's the leading cause of death overall. And for people with type two diabetes, in general, tends to be the leading cause of death. But in this in this study, cancer was the leading cause of death. Cardiovascular disease was second. So right away, that, that surprised me. But when you compare placebo versus metformin versus lifestyle, no difference in all-cause mortality, no difference in cancer, cardiovascular disease, um, mortality. It, it was basically all the same, which is really interesting, right? If you're giving these lifestyle interventions or a treatment metformin, which is thought to have um, potentially cancer preventing uh, capabilities, it's being studied, or certainly if you're controlling diabetes better, shouldn't that translate into all-cause mortality? But in this study, it didn't, which really tells me like it's just not enough, right? Trying to make little impact, improve it a little bit, it's a worthwhile goal compared to nothing, but is it really going to achieve what you want, which is letting people live better and live longer better. And in this study, it says it didn't. So compare that to um, the Swedish obese subject study uh, where they showed putting diabetes into remission was correlated with reduction in cancer death or in incidence of cancer. Um, so to me, that tells me the magnitude matters. So why is this so important? Because there are ways that you can have bigger impacts. So whether that's with low carb diets, ketogenic diets, intermittent fasting, improved exercise with resistance training, things that can control um, uh, metabolic health better, ways to lose weight that are healthy weight loss, prioritizing your protein so you maintain your muscle mass, maintain your resting metabolic rate so you can maintain weight loss, weight loss long term, and doing specific interventions to put diabetes into remission based on this data, seems like that could pay off so much more that you can, if you improve diabetes a little bit, you're gonna get a little bit of improvement. Di improving diabetes a lot isn't sort of a, doesn't appear to be a linear improvement, but rather logarithmic. You're gonna dramatically improve um, the outcomes more than just the incremental benefit in blood sugar control, if that makes sense. That there's like this threshold once you get past that you start to see these dramatic benefits. So. My take home, even though the studies don't say this, my take home is um, that type two diabetes remission isn't just a good idea, it's what we need to be aiming for to have the biggest impact on patients with type two diabetes. All right, hope this was helpful. If it was, please click the thumbs up and subscribe and you'll get our updates here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day.